Hi, I'm Steve Hunt, professional sailor and coach of the national champion Point Loma High School sailing team. You may recognize me on Sailex's flow. I've been playing Sailex for the last five years because I really enjoy it, and it helps keep my tactical and rules knowledge sharp. Given how much I've taken away from Sailex over the last few years, I thought it'd be fun to give back and host a series of lessons to help you improve your results. I hope you enjoy the lesson, and I'll see you on the water soon. Welcome to lesson number one by Steve Hunt, starting at the favorite end. In this lesson, I'll be sailing flow on Salex here in 2D. I started sailing years ago in 2D, and I've become comfortable with it. Uh, I enjoy 3D as well, but I'm a little more comfortable in 2D, so we'll use that for the lesson. <clears throat> the main point that I want to drive home in this lesson is that in sailboat racing, you need to start near the favored end. You know, at least 90% of the time, you want to be starting near the favored end. And there's a real simple reason, and that it puts you ahead in the race. The windward end of the line, the favored end, is closer to the weather mark than the other end. So by starting at the favored end, you're actually closer to your destination, which is the windward mark. Therefore, you're ahead of most of the fleet. Here we have 5 degrees left favored, meaning the pin is favored by 5 degrees. So I'm going to want to start near the pin. You may wonder when you might not start near the favored end, and that would be if the other side of the race course is extremely favored. So here it's a little bit of a dilemma. I see a little more wind on the right side, but the pin is significantly favored, 5 degrees. It's enough for me to warrant starting near the favored end. Maybe if it was favored 1 or 2 degrees, I'd start near the boat because there's more wind on the right. But 5 degrees is enough to get me down here at the pen. And I'm, I might be late here because I'm busy talking. But let's see if I can get to the line in time. It's becoming more and more pen favored. I might even tack at the gun here. Let's see if I can cross. So I start at the favored end by myself. And I'm immediately crossing most boats because they started near the committee boat. Here's another example of starting at the favorite end. Seven, six, it's eight degrees favorite. I'm going to try to attack at the gun here and cross. <clears throat> Just crossing everyone. When I sailed with Bill Hardesty, Rolex Yachtsman of the Year last year, before the start, he's all about where the wind is. He's always ask, asking everyone on the boat, where's more wind? Where's the wind? Where's the wind? He has people stand up to look around. The higher you get, the better your vantage point. Uh, we're always looking for darker texture on the water. The darker, the windier. And again, the reason is wind makes your boat go faster. It's simple. So your number one rule all the time should be find the wind. Here, I see more wind on the left. If you look, it's a little bit darker. There's a puff rolling down towards me right now. The pen's favored by three degrees, and there looks like more wind on the left. Uh-oh. Battling for the pin here. Luckily, the current's pushing from left to right, which might help me make the pin. There we go. Sorry, this guy's protesting me here. <clears throat> so I'm in the most wind. Should be gaining on the fleet. Let's look. The pin was just barely favored, but I'm already getting further ahead because there's more wind. Now you can see there's more wind developing here. So I'm looking to tack. Problem is these starboard tack boats so I probably will tack and then tack back just to get in more wind here. When this guy goes, I'll go. Sail in more wind. Always look around for it. Stand up in your boat when you can. Wear polarized sunglasses. Look for other boats moving faster. Look for other boats heeled over. Look for 
white caps, look for more waves, and mainly look for darkness. Wind makes waves and the light refracts differently creating a darker image. Here we can see darkness rolling down towards me. So the darker the windier is the saying. Always look for darkness and put your boat in it. Another way to have more wind is to sail in clean air. I was in first here and I got passed because I messed up my ley line and Totorola got on my breeze. You can see here uh, the wind shadows. I press S to see wind shadows. And by sailing in others' wind shadows, you have less breeze. You can also see here on the right more wind forming. So I'm going to head to the right, and I might pass Totorola back by getting into the wind before him. So I lost him by sailing in his bad air, having less wind. And I might pass him back by sailing in more wind. So start near the favored end. Maybe you wouldn't do that if it was super crowded or the other side of the course was very favored. Uh, and sail in more wind. You pretty much always want to do that unless the only exception would be if it's super windy already and you're already starting to rag your sails. Sometimes upwind, a little more wind makes you rag your sails even harder, not fast. But the other 95% of the time, probably depending on where you sail, you want to sail in more wind because it makes your boat go faster. The third lesson is sail towards the mark. So I see here on the left it says 12 degrees left shift. So the pin is very favored. The wind looks pretty even to me. So I'm going to try to get off the line, make sure I'm in the wind, and then tack and get on port tack. Because starboard tack right now, the tack we're all on, is headed. So we're going to start at the pin and because it's so favored, we might be able to tack and cross the fleet. So 12 seconds, 11 seconds. Looks like we might be able to win it here if I get my timing right. Nailed it. Okay, we're going to tack and cross the fleet. But as I look, I see a little more wind to our left. <clears throat> So I'm going to zoom out here. We're on the long tack. You can see we're, we're definitely aiming more towards the mark than the other tack. But this is a great example because I'm slightly conflicted and that I think there's a little more wind to the left. Scratch that. The wind just filled in on the right. So the dilemma is over. But let's say the wind did not fill in on the right and it, it was further left. I may tack and head over towards more wind, especially if other boats got leveraged over there. But since most of the fleet is going straight here, I would probably go straight and just stick with the group. If you ever split from the majority of the fleet, you better be darn sure you're right. It's simple. And what it means is don't tack and jibe too much and don't get involved in drama. Don't get involved in pileups at the weather mark. Don't get involved in protests. You really want your scorecard to be all numbers all single digit numbers and keeping it simple helps you accomplish this. Let's see if we can get a good start here. Two, one. Okay, good start. At the favorite end, we can probably cross soon. Maybe we we'll cross Wharf Rat. If not, we'll tack back. Yep, not sure, so we're going to tack back. So that's one example of keeping it simple. Here's another example of keeping it simple. I typically like to win the pin and be the closest boat to the pin. But here, since the current is going right to left pretty hard, I'm going to stay a little bit further away from the pin to avoid drama and actually hitting it. Typically when the, there's a lot of current, like this right to left current, the pin gets real crowded and bunched up and there's going to be people hitting it. So I'm going to stay a little bit more to the right to be safe here. See, there we go. Young Gun, SD969, Penguin Racer. They all are not keeping it simple, and therefore they're pretty far back in the race right now. Granted, I didn't win the start like I would prefer, but I'm doing pretty well. Here's another opportunity to practice keeping it simple. Coming in on the port tack ley line, I'm going to be in the zone at the top mark with starboard tackers coming. 
So I really have to evaluate here, can I make it and cross, or should I duck? I'm thinking it should be a duck here, <clears throat> so I don't foul. Now I don't want to tack too close on Noi, so I go a little past ley line and then tack. Lesson number five, mind the current. <clears throat> you can see here by looking at the arrows, if you hit U, you can see arrows, U, U back. And you can see the arrows are smaller on the right than the left. So we're going to try to start the boat here. Even though the pin is favored, which is one of our rules, sailing better current is another rule, and there's more wind on the right. So it's two rules against one here. So we're going to try to come in with some speed. We're a little bit late, whoops. But it looks like we'll be able to tack and get right first. So once we can clear the committee boat end, we'll tack. I usually foot a little bit out of tacks and catamarans to go faster. And so now, you can see, we're leading to the right. We're in more wind. We did not start at the favorite end, but there's bigger arrows over here than over here. See this little arrow? bigger arrow. So the further right I go, the smaller the arrows will get. And we're also pretty fortunate, looks like more wind as well. So in deciding our game plan, we scratch the favored end, which would give us probably a few length gain, because getting to the right where there's less current would give us even more of a gain. Choosing the gate can be a tricky proposition because there's a few variables involved. But there's a series of questions you can ask yourself to help figure it out. The first question is, which way do you want to go upwind? Which side of the course do you think is favored? The next question is, which mark is closer to you as you face the gates? And the upwind mark is closer to you. Uh, when you're actually racing, the upwind mark will appear a little bit larger because most of the time the gates are the same size. The third question is, <clears throat> will there be traffic? So here, we're in a left hand shift 9 degrees, so as we face the screen, the left mark will be upwind. Looks like we want to go right upwind, so we'll round the upwind favored gate and then tack. When we do this here, it's a little tricky because we're crossing through downwind boats. I call it running the gauntlet, and often they're on starboard. For example, if true love were to jibe, or here we go, e gaga is on starboard, so I need to avoid but I rounded the upwind closer gate and then tacked to head to the correct side. So the main things you want to ask again are, what side of the course do you want? Which mark is closer? And then the third question is, will there be traffic? Traffic is a big decision in that if your upwind favored gate is really crowded, you often want to go to the other gate. Traffic can ruin your day, put you in a few protests, and uh, if you round outside of a group, it's often hard to get out of there especially if you're on the left gate as we look on our screen wide, then everyone inside of you has starboard and it's hard to tack. So I think we gained here, we rounded the upwind mark and then tack to sail the long tack and go towards the favorite side of the course. Here we are coming down to the gate again and a little more traffic this time. Uh, the gates are pretty square and the right side just became favorite so we'll think, I think I'll take the right gate here. And you can see all that traffic on the left. So if the left would have been favored, I probably would have taken this gate anyway. Because you zoom out, I had see all these boats flashing and one just, one just uh, escaped from the race. It's because they got into a little fouling situation. I had four boats going to this gate and zero boats going to this gate. Luckily, at the last second, this gate became favored, but I would have chose it anyway rather than round on the outside of four boats.